Trail, and it is set in Kuala Lumpur in 2008, and also in England and Berlin in 1952. And uh, uh, I shall begin. <clears throat> it begins in here. Unlike Marcel Proust, I never go to bed early. There is so much to do in those late or early hours while the rest of the world and the wife are asleep. In Kale, when the heat of the day has passed, there is nothing finer than to enjoy the cool, tropical evening. I leaf through old books, gaze at my poussin, listen to my Chopin, or sense the rustlings of the forest just behind my house. I live deep in the city, but I am fortunate enough to have the remains of the forest behind my house. And at night, I can look out from the veranda into the darkness and see only the eyes of an unknown animal reflecting back at me. In the silence of the night, I imagine the thoughts pass between us and that we share the understanding that we are the only ones awake. A jungle, a real jungle, is never silent at night. I know this from my childhood. A real jungle is alive and loud at night. In the treetops above, scampering over your feet below and in the distance, beyond the nearest trees and the flickering light of the campfire, there is unknowable movement. A meaningless small stream might suddenly roar into a terrifying torrent and then just as suddenly die down again to return to its tranquil way, except that huge and seemingly immo immovable rocks have been rearranged. And nobody in the whole world, apart from my father and I, and half a dozen unhappy but faithful family retainers, would ever know that it had happened. But this hacktop limb of the forest behind my house is silent at night. It is the ship shipwrecked remains of a once mighty vessel washed up onto a hill and surrounded by the sea of a sprawling, noisy, dirty city. A city that will not be satisfied until this tiny remain has been engulfed. The local residents have decided that this will not happen, but we will eventually lose the fight, and the light and darkness behind my house will be snuffed out, and my mysterious nocturnal friend will die unnoticed. I don't want to go to bed early. I don't want to sleep at all. I want to stay awake forever, enjoying whatever vestiges of my world remain to me. I want to lie on my chaise longue, under the whirring ceiling fan, surrounded by my lovely things, below my wife's blood slumbering in the room above, knowing that I am alive and that I have lived a life worth living. Now that I am older, never old, I want to remember and occasionally forget the things I have done in my lifetime. My memories, many of which I cannot even share with wife, are my happiest possessions, and I like to enjoy them at night, safe in the knowledge that I am where I want to be, even if I am, like the forest behind me and my nocturnal friend, an endangered species, threatened with extinction by my own country. My entire working life, for at least every other day or so, I had loyally served a nation that had not even been imagined when I was young, but I had served and understood, and then it became something else. Sometimes the wife will find me in the morning, sleeping on the chaise long. She will replace the photo of our son, the Ayatollah, which I usually hide away because it spoils the mood. <laughs> and she will ask me what I've been doing all night. Nothing, darling, I will always say. It was not always the case that I would have been happy being where I am now. If you had asked me five decades ago where I wanted to be, I would have said anywhere but Malaysia. I wanted to be far away from this tiny new country and its jungle. But I have been on a journey since then, and along the way I have experienced the things that make me what I am today, an older man, comfortable in his own skin. Along the way I have experienced love, loyalty, divided loyalty, misunderstood loyalty, beauty, oh such ravishing beauty, trust, and above all betrayal, or was that real loyalty? There is one thing I share with Marcel Proust, which is that a seemingly insignificant smell can trigger a flood of memory. For Proust, the smell of a cake unleashed 3,000 pages of remembrances of things past. For me, it happened a few days ago. It was only a few short days ago, but since that moment, I had been swept away by a flood of memory. Only now, this night, are the waters dying down again, enough for me to gasp for air, see where I am, and who I am. It all began when I was walking through one of those infernal shopping malls which are all noise, crowd, buy now, and 20% discount. I loathe having to be anywhere with so many exclamation marks, but I had to go because the wife's birthday was fast approaching, and I needed to buy her something. Despite, we have, despite the fact that we have been married for so very long, 
I still find myself utterly unable to think of anything for her birthday. It was at least 30 years ago that I realized she no longer wanted cravats, tweed jackets, or even umbrellas from James Smith and Sons. And ever since then, I have struggled. Surely, I always suggest, I should be the best possible present, but apparently not. So I wandered through a department store, gazing at mysterious ladies' apparel, when a young Malay person of mysterious gender <coughs> popped out of nowhere and squirted something in my eye, <coughs> which immediately induced a searing play, pain. What the bloody hell are you doing, I murmured. Rapture for men, it shirked. What the bloody hell are you talking about? I think you've blinded me. The new fragrance from Calvin Klein. Unless Calvin Klein is an ophthalmologist, I'm bloody well not interested. It has a cinnamon bouquet with lighter, fresher notes for today's metrosexual. How dare you! <laughs> I've never been insult, so insulted in all my life. <clears throat> At this point, a young Chinese lady floor manager skipped across, presumably hoping to defuse the situation, which was very sensible, because for Malay men of my generation, an attractive Chinese lady can defuse most situations. <laughs> with my one good eye, I managed to see that her name tag said Wendy. Can I help you? <laughs> yes, you can. Please take this, this person away from me. I don't want anything else squirted into my eye, I demand. It's rapture for men, Wendy stated. That may be true for some, but it's agony for me. <laughs> it has a cinnamon bouquet with lighter, fresher notes, she added pointlessly. For today's metrosexual, the mysteriously gendered Malay said, I tried to cattle it, I felt. His, or her, name tag said Ina, with three E's. <laughs> I did not come here to have my sexuality impugned. I may have gone to a boarding school, but all those stories about MCKK are just vile rumors put about by Penang free schoolers because they're jealous little plebs. <laughs> I could tell you some stories about what they got up to after lights out. I'm a red-blooded male, Wendy. Do you mind if I call you Wendy? You can call me Dato. <clears throat> Perhaps I was overcompensating, but I really don't like anybody getting the wrong idea about me. No, Dato, soothed Wendy. Metrosexual, like David Beckham. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Like Prince Charles, said Nina, capturing my attention. Really? But he seems so normal. Perhaps Dato would like a more mature fragrance, Wendy said, more for Nina's benefit than mine. Oh, the ones for old people, agreed Nina. You're wasting your time, I interjected. I only use Dunhill. It's, all, it's good for all occasions. It's what a real man smells like. I caught a gl glimpse of Nina's wry smile and immediately regretted my choice of words. Wendy gently turned my wrist and sprayed on some perfume. Try this, Dutton. I think you might like it. I breathed in a heady aroma of pine and citrus and was immediately transported back to Africa in the 1960s. Vast, <laughs> low skies, open plains, an endless, endless winding river, grubby Portuguese settlers emerging from an outrageously impenetrable belt, and two dark-eyed Bulgarian sirens. It's delicious, I lamented. I haven't smelt this for years. What is it called again? Pino Silvestre, said Wendy. How could I have forgotten? I used to wear this all the time. It had been my scent until that upstart Zane stole it from me. Try this, Dato. Nina grabbed my other wrist and sprayed. Lavender, coumarin and ginger. Tunku and my father in a cloud of cigarette smoke discussing my future, but unable to come up, come up with any answers. A classic English fragrance from the dying days of empire, but I couldn't remember its name. Penhaligon's English fern, said Nina eagerly. Of course, how could I have forgotten? <laughs> I was beginning to swoon in a perfume cloud of long-forgotten memories. Meanwhile, Wendy and Nina could smell the blood of a big sail and started peppering me with perfumes from every angle. <laughs> Vetiva, Monsieur Belma, Lenin Bouquet, and the unmistakable Tabarone from Creed. I knew them all, and yet I had forgotten them all. But now each one brought back times, places, youth, longings, regrets, and even some triumphs. Wendy and Ina were grinning, grinning with their onslaught, and I was powerless to resist. I reached for my only weapon and pulled out my credit card. <laughs> I'll take the lot, I pleaded. Would Dutt have liked them gift wrapped? asked Ina. No, just give them to me and let me go, I continued pleading. 
Would you like something for a lady? Wendy asked. Who? I didn't know what she was talking about. Your wife. <coughs> Your wife? Ina asked. My wife? Yes, of course, my wife. I need a birthday present. Could you choose something? Is she a younger lady? Wendy asked delicately. Or is she old like you? <laughs> Ina asked indelicately. She is older, a mature lady, the same age as myself, and therefore not old. We need to know, Wendy said, so we can choose the right scent. And a lot of the Dato and Dato and Tansui Tansui have their third or fourth wife when they're old like you. And they get younger and younger. <laughs> and Ina helpfully. She is my first and only one, I said proudly. I am not like the other. Perhaps your wife.